What is going on guys, NanoBrits93 here with another video and today I thought I'd change it up a little bit, get outside, we just put this little patio balcony set together. Today the main topic is going to be Microsoft Office on the iPad Pro. One of the biggest reasons why people are hesitant to move to the iPad Pro is because of Microsoft Office and they don't know how extensive the functionality of Microsoft Office is, right? As much as we love it or hate it, Microsoft Office is used, you know, in a lot of organizations, a lot of big time corporations. So being able to, whether it's just Outlook or the entire Microsoft suite, being able to use it on your iPad Pro, especially if your iPad Pro is going to be your only device, it's a, it's a big deal, guys. So that's what we're going to try today. We know we're trying it for the first time. I'm going to see how extensive everything is and show you guys to what extent you can use the Microsoft, the Microsoft Office suite and how compatible it is with iPad OS and how compatible it is with iPad OS 13.4 and cursor support. So let's hop right into it, guys. We've got a bunch of new followers this week, so welcome to the channel, guys. Let's get right into it. The main plan today is to figure out whether or not iPad Pro can run the Microsoft Office suite well. What I do want to tell you guys to preface this whole video is the fact that I'm a very basic Microsoft user. I use it for email, I use it for you know Word to process some text, I use PowerPoint presentations all the time, but outside of that I'm not big into the Microsoft suite and I usually only do it whether I usually do it on my Windows computer that I was given for work or on the iPad Pro because the functionality for what I need it for is fully there. But I do want to dive right in and go to the top top down view to kind of walk you guys through from beginning to end the main Microsoft products and whether or not they work on the iPad Pro. All right, guys, so before we get started, I want to touch on all the different apps that we're going to be testing out today, right? I'm going to talk about pretty much just the basic, you know, most important Microsoft suite products that people use on a daily basis. And I put them all in a little folder down here on the home docs. So we got Excel, PowerPoint, OneDrive, Outlook, Word, OneNote, Edge, which I, you know, some people use, some people don't, and Teams. So the main ones that we're really going to need to focus on here are Excel, Word, and PowerPoint. You know, Outlook and OneDrive, I'll touch on those a little bit and then also, but the main ones we do want to see and the questions that I get the most are based around the basic, the three, you know, pillars of Microsoft. So the first thing I want to do with each one is just open it up as if it's a blank document, right? So if you open up Excel, this is what you're greeted with, right? And what I want to show you guys is basically how it feels to open up an Excel, a brand new Excel file and then let you compare it to what it looks like opening it on a Windows machine or a Mac OS machine, right? And from my understanding, it's very, very similar. Again, I'm not an Excel wizard. If you guys need a super in-depth analysis on Excel and using it like as a database, um, using macro settings, things like that, then unfortunately I'm not gonna be your guy, but you can use it as a normal Excel sheet, right? So here we got all the different templates that they've, that they kind of show you guys from totaling a list all the way down to budgeting, calendaring, all that good stuff. Um, then you go to your recent. So these are different recent applications or recent files that you've opened before, shared files. You can open files from different drives, which you can see here, including the files app. And then you have your settings, which basically lets you log in to your O365 account and things like that, right? So the main thing that I just want to show you guys is a blank workbook. If you can use Excel for basic functions, then it's going to work, guys. So let's make a list of one, two, three, four. Let's go back up. Five, six. And that is working the same way. So what I'm doing is I'm just pressing seven, enter, and it goes down. Eight, enter, and it goes down. Nine, enter, it goes down. Let's go to 10. And then what I'm going to do here is add a bottom bar. So you can see that the settings are pretty much the same. You can see that toolbar is up here. It gives you everything you would need for, for text and also some some cell variation, things like that. You can insert different things like pictures, something from your camera, shapes, a text box, charts that you can create, right? You can draw so you can physically get your pen out and just start drawing, I believe. Yep, so you can do that. Let's erase that. So that's nice that you, so you can live annotate onto an Excel file. Formulas, obviously this gives you all the different formulas that you would need. Data to sort it how you want it to sort it. And you can add filters, which is nice review so if you if this is a shared file you can show all the comments and add comments and then lastly view right so you can kind of set this up however you would want to set it up but what i kind of want to show you guys is just the functionality right so if we go down here we press equals you know as a normal thing would sum of this and let's see if we can press shift and click here so unfortunately you can't do that so i know a big thing for me is being able to highlight certain excel or certain cells within the excel file and you can't do that by holding shift and down. So what you have to do is drag it all the way down like you, I guess, like you would normally. But let's close that parentheses, press enter, and boom, 55 is there. Let's see if it changes if I change 
whatever data is in there, press enter, you can see it's changing. So 60, you can see that it continues to change, 1 million or 100,000. So you can see that simple formula functionalities do work within Excel. You can change the to a number tab if you want to. You can add sheets. You can rename it just by long pressing. So rename test sheet. And one thing that I do want you guys to know is that mouse support isn't fully, fully integrated within a lot of the Microsoft, Microsoft applications, right? So normally if you hover over something, then it would take shape of whatever it's hovering over. And right now it's not doing that. So you can tell that it's not updated for 13.4. It's updated for regular point and click stuff, which you can see that I'm doing right here. But again, it's not updated, updated for the magic keyboard essentially. And that's why I think that shift option isn't working. So that's the extent of what Excel is and what I'm going to show you, right? So, and then the other thing that I want to do is see if it works in multitasking. So for instance, which I don't think it's going to work for Excel, but let's say you have two Excel files and you need to reference one of them. Unfortunately, you cannot place a second Excel file down no matter where I let it go. And if I grab this sheet two and try to move it, I can't do that either. I can just change the order within the actual Excel sheet, but I can't go into Excel and open up another Excel file. But what I can do is open up another application. So let's pull out PowerPoint. So multitasking as a feature works for the iPad on Office 365, but as you can see, it's limited to multitasking between different, different types of applications. So this is PowerPoint. So now we're done with Excel. So it greets you with all the different PowerPoint templates very, very classic. So let's open up a gallery one and start drawing something up. So don't forget to sub, right? And what I wanna try here is see if another PowerPoint can open up. So here you can, so that's that's a strange one for me, right? So you can open up two PowerPoint presentations, but you can't open up two Excel files. And I think for some reason, Excel is the only one that can't double open versus PowerPoint, if you really wanted to, you can have three. So you have three different PowerPoint applications open at the same time. Obviously slide over isn't an ideal way to do it, but if we just quit out of there, then boom, you have two PowerPoints open right away. So let's close out the second one. Let's go in here and you can see that the, it's very, very similar guys. Here, all you have to press there, add a new slide. Let's add another one. You can add as many as you want. And again, you can insert different tables, photos. You can annotate live again. Let's see if it works. Yes, it does. We go to erase. So you go and you can go on different themes to kind of theme it out a little bit, you know, change it up for you. You can add animations, transitions, get into the slideshow. So play from current, boom, there it is. So you can play the PowerPoint presentation from the start, just like you would any other way. Press next on the arrow keys to go back and forward. And then you can get out of it just by minimizing right here. You get different views and then X out on the top left. So that is a PowerPoint in a nutshell, guys. So let's keep going down this list. What else do we have? So let's open up a Word document. Again, I wanna give you guys an idea of what everything looks like. And if, you know, for better or for worse, I know a lot of people use Microsoft on a daily basis for work tasks, right? So just the fact that you're able to open Word documents, right? You're able to use templates. It looks very familiar. And you can just go right in here and do whatever you want with a Word document, right? Like, hello, take over. Just kind of take over whatever the template says, right? So the word works how it's supposed to work. And now let's try opening up a second word document. See, so it does work. So again, the only one that's having issues opening a second document or a second instance of that same application is Excel, which I'm sorry is, I know it's pretty tough for you guys because I know a lot of people, the thing that's holding a lot of people back is Excel, is Microsoft Excel for the iPad Pro. And I, again, for basic use, it works how Excel should work. But for what we are going on here, if you need more of that Excel, then we're gonna have to dig in a little bit deeper and find out if it can do everything that you need it to do. And that's something that you have to do to figure out if the iPad is the way to go. But again, two different Word files open at the same time. So now let's go to Outlook. As you can see, Outlook opens up normally. Skip that. I'm not gonna put in all my information, but you can check, swipe up, and let's say you wanna open up another Outlook, bring it over, and it does work that way, which is nice. And let's say, for instance, you're referencing an email and you gotta put it into a Word document. Boom, there's your Word document here. You can see two instances. Which one am I working on? This one, so this one pops up. All of your applications and files will autosave into your new OneDrive account or whatever one, OneDrive account you're signed into. And they can also export or send copies to different file systems, right? So you can do a PDF or a text document, send a copy through email or another Outlook app or another email app. So that's really, really nice. And that's what we're dealing with when it comes to Microsoft Office products, right? So 
The last few that I do want to touch on is OneDrive and then how that actually syncs into your file system, which is really, really nice. So uh, keep up with file changes. I'm not a big notifications guy. So this is the file system. Really, really nice. We can add whatever we need to. So it works very, very similar with, to the Natives Files app. So if we want to open up two OneDrives, can we do that? Yes, we can. Oh, it looks like we can do that. So that option isn't currently supported, but what we can do is swipe down and open up a regular files app. And if we go over here into locations, you can actually edit and sign in to your OneDrive account. So whatever files are in your OneDrive account will also be in your files account, which means that it'll also be on any of your iOS device file accounts. So it'll be on your iPhone, on your Mac computer, if that's what you use. That's what's nice. I like how it integrates well within the native software and you're able to use OneDrive natively inside of iPadOS. And then the last two are Edge and Teams. That's Edge is up to you guys. Edge is not optimized whatsoever for the iPad. If I try to pull up another one, it won't open. I can't even do a slide over. I can't pull this tab and move it over like I can with Safari. So if you guys are Edge users, yes, you can sign in. Yes, you get all your bookmarks. Yes, you get all your password saves uh, once you sign in to your Edge account. But other than that, it's a pretty standard web surfer, right? What I do want to do is check out YouTube and see what comes up. If it brings me, I want to see if by going to youtube.com, it brings me to the YouTube website or if it takes me to the YouTube app or if it brings me to a mobile website. Yep. So you can see it's a mobile version and that's where we're defaulted to guys. So we'll get out of there. And then Teams is a collaboration device. I'm not going to open it up, sensitive information, but that's what it is. And Teams does work side by side. So again, the only ones that don't work with with iPadOS functionality is Excel and Edge. I do think Excel is gonna come around eventually, but we the biggest update that we want for this instance is for all of them to support that 13.4 mount support. So that way it's a lot easier, especially within Excel, to navigate Excel. Because right now, navigating numbers, which is Apple's version of Excel, is a lot, a lot easier, guys. And numbers does work better because it is natively supported to 13.4 and not even 13.5 to this point. So basically in a nutshell, how well Microsoft works on the iPad itself. They added multitasking, like I said, to a lot of the applications. Everything from a basic standpoint works very well. I would even say that PowerPoint and Word work identical to something on a desktop. It's just Excel that you have to play with to find out exactly what you would need moving forward. But let's switch over to the normal view and we'll go from there, guys. So guys, what we've learned here is that Microsoft, in a nutshell, it works, and it works well on the iPad Pro. All the basics from a Microsoft application, I would say, except Excel, because you can't multitask with Excel, which is beyond me, because a lot of people use two different Excel spreadsheets for data input and data entry and things like that, so I'm sure Microsoft will add, make that adjustment very, very soon, but if you want to do just the basics with the Microsoft suite, so that's PowerPoint, Excel, Word, OneDrive, Teams for communication, and Outlook, then this is gonna work for you. If you're a basic user of all those products, then yeah. And I even think that Word and PowerPoint are 100% there, at least for my user. However, it is running currently on iPad Pro. It's running very, very effectively. There's no hiccups, there's no stuttering, there's no lagging. You don't have to restart anything. I haven't had any issues like that yet. Everything saves automatically onto your OneDrive. It links, like I said, to your files application. So from from the outside looking in, it looks good. So it's up to you. Basically, you have to determine whether or not Excel is a huge part of your workflow from on a day-to-day -day basis. And you have to play around with Excel on an iPad or maybe even play it on your iPhone just to see what the capabilities are and what those limitations are. So that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed and hopefully it kinda shed some light on you guys to figure out whether or not you can go full iPad Pro or not if you're super involved in that Microsoft ecosystem. But like I said, that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let's keep growing the channel. I'm gonna keep making videos like this to kind of show off different applications within iPad and kind of show off the workflow, you know, from beginning to end. Because at the end of the day, my opinion is you can get to your end product and what you want your iPad to do for you. It's just a matter of how you get there and learning that new way to get there. That's gonna be a little bit difficult. And that's where the learning curve is. But if you guys wanna go full iPad Pro, it's 100% doable. But like I said, that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe.